have a question. What is your favorite song and how do you connect with it? Is it when you fell in love or through something really difficult? I'm your host, Tiffany Mason. Now join me as I interview others and we take a walk down memory lane with them. Let's get lost in why that music matters to them. Turn up your radio and let's explore memories with a beat. Hello, Podcast Land. Thank you for joining me for another episode of Memories with a Beat. And today I have with me Robbie Shank. And that's kind of like thank, you know. So if you guys are getting into the episode and you want to decide that you want to check out more of Robbie, remember Shank like thank, even though it's spelled a little bit differently, but it's going to be in the show notes. So you guys won't get it confused. Um, With that long explanation of your last name, Robbie, would you tell us a little bit about yourself, please? Hey, Tiffany, thank you so much for having me. Um, I'm excited and nervous because this is my first podcast. Um, But I'm from Gainesville, Florida. I grew up there, graduated from Gainesville High School and um, moved to Jacksonville, Florida, which is where I am now in 2005. Um, In between my graduation in 1995 and 2005, there was a lot between, but um, I ended up here and I'm super happy. Well, all I just have to say, go Gators. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We're in my closet. If I took more time, I have this totally blinged out tank top. And I know that there's all this controversy, but I love doing the chomp chomp and then gator bait. And yeah. not because of anything bad, but just because I want our team to eat up that other team. So are you a gator fan, Robbie? I, I am. It's hard to grow up in Gainesville and not be a Gator fan because so much of what's in Gainesville is so interlocked with the university. And I grew up playing baseball um, at, at the stadium, watching Gator baseball games, you know, playing um, behind the stands and just all the things kids do, um, going to Gatorcade, the arcade, and, and just lots of Gator stuff in my life. And my mom actually moved us to Gainesville after my parents divorced when I was in third grade because she had such a great network of Gator fan friends. And that was her whole support um, or most of her support group back then. And I'll be forever indebted to that, you know, um, that community and, and what they did for her and, and through her for us, uh, my two sisters and I. So, um, so yeah, I love Gainesville and definitely watch the Gators every time they play anything, basketball, baseball, football. <laughs> all the balls. Yeah. Our son, um, he was kind of, you know, in between all the schools and for a second he almost went there and I was like, yes, Ugh. but at the last second he swerved and he went, he's going to UCF. So oh, still okay. good. Still yeah. here in Florida. So he's not too far from mom, but, um, yeah, that would have been awesome to have him be a, a Gator fan. And honestly, I don't know if I watched very much college football before and being in the stands, I just can't get over how much school spirit there is just like electrifying. I, I think I like it better than NFL games because we've been to, you yeah. know, a handful of Jacksonville Jags games. And I'll tell you what, the college games put them to shame for team spirit. Yeah, I still remember the first time I, I walked into Ben Hill Griffin Stadium in Gainesville as probably a a uh, uh, 10 year old uh, or so and just first of all it's so orange the whole stadium is orange i remember as a, as a kid the first time i went into ben hill griffin stadium just being blown away by the energy and um the orangeness of the stadium and just how packed it you know it gets in there so yeah it, it's an it's an awesome place and one of a kind as far as i know i haven't been to a lot of the other major stadiums around the country but it's got to be right up there Yeah. Yeah. It's awesome. Yeah. Well, you guys, I found Robbie or like, you know, non-romantically fell in love with Robbie. Oh my gosh. We went (laughs) to Palm Valley Outdoors, which is, um, you know, a place here in Ponte Vedra and just having casual dinner, you know, and our friends that were with us like, oh great, there's music outside. And we go outside and we see these two mismatched guys, okay? <laughs> so on Saturday nights, he has a buddy that joins him and his name's Felix. <laughs> Felix is like in a blazer. He's got like the little napkin come out of the coat pocket. He's got this beautiful, I don't know, is it stainless steel violin? Um, I think it's wooden, but it has like a finish of... Um, really? Uh, like, a, like a sparkly type um, finish that kind of makes it look like... It's stainless steel, but uh, he's got a couple of them. He uh, breaks out the other one just in December. So, uh, so yeah, Felix is, he is amazing. 
Well, I, oh my God, when he strums, or I don't know how you say it with the bow, and he really gets into it, and you can see him leaning into that violin, and you know he's just feeling those notes that are coming out of that instrument. Mm -hmm. Oh my gosh. And then his voice is uh, like a tenor, right? So he's kind of in the middle upper range. Yeah, and he's actually got, um, he goes a little a little higher than just a tenor hmm. and uh, really fits me well because I'm more of a tenor baritone. Um, our, our range is just kind of, they only overlap for a little bit. And, and so mm -hmm. he's got that high, all those high notes that uh, complement me. And yeah, when I first met him, he, he didn't sing at all. And uh, really? yeah, so it, it took a couple of years for him to finally kind of come out of his shell that way. And that's been awesome to to see. Man, your voices just melt together like butter. And I think that's what's so exciting about watching you guys is it's like, yeah. you know, you always show up. You look like you kind of just came off the beach. You got your tennis <laughs> shoes on. You know, you got a little bit of a Dave Matthews vibe to you. You know, and you're you're up there singing, and then we've got this other guy, very polished, next to you. But then you guys <laughs> sing together. Oh, I freaking loved it! I can't remember the last time that I really like heard a group, and I mean, you guys, it was so good that that <laughs> that night I reached out to my friends, and I was like, "You guys, this music was so good. We have to go see them again next Saturday." Oh, and my thank friends you. were and, and all about it. it. Yeah, we were so excited. I'm like, "You guys." It's the coolest thing. It's like this guy, he's like totally got the Florida vibe. And then we've got this other guy and he's super polished. I'm like, but you wouldn't believe how their voices completely go together. <laughs> so yeah, I just, I, I, I'm like your personal hype person, I think. <laughs> well, that's awesome. We can always use those. Thank you. And, uh, and yeah, when I first met Felix, it was 2012. I was playing at a, a gig here in Jacksonville, a place called Seven Bridges. And and at that time, I'd been playing uh, professionally full time for about six years. And I had had people come up to me asking, hey, can I play with you sometime? And sure. And honestly, a solo thing was my deal. You know, it was my it was my job. And when you bring somebody on, you've got to split the money and the tips. And, and I was doing very well. And, and a lot of times those guys were like drunk and I could tell. Oh. And I just did, you know, I would give them my card and just hope, <laughs> hope they didn't call. Um, but it was totally different with Felix. He approached me at the end of my gig and uh he was in a suit that night like he, he most of the time is and um he asked me if he could play with me sometime and i said i'll be back here at seven bridges in two weeks i had forgotten about it to be honest and he he texted me the day of or the day before and said hey i'd, I'd like to go up there and, and and meet you and i didn't know how it would go and it went so well that it, there's actually a video on my youtube channel of us on our first night playing together there. And um, I was just grinning from ear to ear through every song because I was like, who is this guy? You know, how lucky am I to be playing with him? And now eight years later, it's, it's still going strong. He's got a, a regular job. And so he's working more lately to where he can only play Saturdays with me. But I, anytime I can play with him, I just, um, I appreciate it and uh, have great fun doing it. Yeah, you guys are a really good duo. Thank you. got a podcast? Are you loving it, but not loving how much time post-production takes? Or maybe you just have other tasks calling your name a little bit louder. Virtually You can help. Check out virtuallyuva.com, supporting you in all things podcasting, like editing, show notes, audiograms, and much more. See the link in the show notes. They're waiting to give you back your time. And on that note, let's get back to the show. Well, you said that you were in Gainesville until 2005, and I know that you wrote your song in 2004. Yeah. So let's dive into it a little bit. Tell us, you know, set the scene for us. Where were you, or what does this song make you feel? Now, Robbie, if I'm correct, this is a song that you wrote, correct? Yes, yes, entirely original. Okay, so where did your inspiration come from, and what does it mean to you? Well, um, this, was, um, this was a point in my life where I just wasn't sure what I was doing. I, I, I was back in Gainesville for, for the first part of 2004. I was living on my sister's floor um, in her living room and she was amazing to, to let me in. 
and, and do that. And uh, just to say, my mom and my two sisters are my greatest supporters. And, uh, you know, mm. looking back, I don't, I'm not surprised she did that, but she didn't have to. So anyways, my buddy Brad and I, um, we rented a place. If anybody knows Gainesville well, there's a dive bar called Munigan's on 13th Street in the northwest side of town. And it was just this little place behind Munigan's. I mean, just a step up from a shack. <laughs> but uh, we had three hurricanes come to the state that year. And they were Ivan, Charlie, and Francis. And we, we lost power mm. for the second two. And I don't know if it was the first one or the second one, but I we had moved out because we just couldn't live in there with the heat and um, and no power. And I'd driven back over there to see if our power had come back on. And it hadn't. And I'd had this finger picking, um, you know, progression that I always use to warm up just, and I play it real fast just to warm my fingers up. And I'd always wanted to write something that I, to that progression and hadn't. And I just remember that night sitting down on the, on the steps. When I say steps, they were like cinder block steps mm -hmm. um, up to the shack and uh, sitting down and it just flowed out. It's not the first or, or last song that's flowed out, but they all don't do that. And I just really, really liked the, both the music and, and the lyrics and how they kind of just summed up where I was both in my life, um, emotionally with a, a relationship and also with, uh, these hurricanes that were just coming through town, like every couple of weeks. So, yeah. And it's also probably my most popular original song when I play my gigs, um, you know, there are some others that are close, but I, I think it's the most popular. Yeah. You said your sister took you in. Is your sister older than you or younger than you? I have an older sister and a younger sister. Um, the one that took me in is Ashley and she's younger than me by four years. <laughs> and uh, so. Yeah. Well, you said that they didn't have to take you in, but you would do the same thing for them. So. Oh. For yeah, sure. that's pretty awesome. The the love of a family. Yeah. Um, and you also said that this song just kind of flowed out of you. And I have heard multiple times that sometimes a song, it's like a flash in the pan. You got to write it down while it's happening um, and take advantage of that. You know, the, the creative juices that are flowing at that moment. And I have heard too, where, you know, some people will say, you know, I've worked on this song for five years. So mm -hmm. yep. Both ends of the spectrum is pretty interesting. Um, yeah. So the, the, Cinder blocks to the shack. That was the shack that you guys had been living in, correct? We were living in at the time I wrote that song. Okay. Yeah. Yep. Okay. And so you go there and you have your guitar in your car because you just probably keep it with you, I would assume. Yeah. Or it might have just been there because I wasn't worried about it overheating and just the regular house without AC, you know, it'd have to be somewhere super hot to really take damage. So it was my house. So I'm not sure if my guitar was in the house or if I had taken it with me over, oh, sure. over to our buddy's house where we were staying. I don't know what moved me to do it then. I, I do consider myself a songwriter. I've been writing songs ever since that. My first one was when I was 12, sixth grade. So I think that's 12. Oh, wow. And then in ninth grade, I met my uh, my buddy Jack Stripling and started my first band, and we did all original music, which is odd for a for a younger, um, newer band because usually you start playing other people's songs, and then you start writing your own. Sure. But I met him, and he is an amazing lyricist, and was even back in ninth grade. He was the singer of the band. I was just the guitar player back then. I didn't think I could sing at all back then, and. Uh, so he was my co-writer and and then after I moved on out of high school, I kept writing songs, but only one or two a year, you know. Um, and then in 2012, I just for some reason stopped writing because I was so busy with that was the year I met Felix. It has nothing to do with that, but we mm. we've been so busy. And then in 2019, I started my song club and I've been writing like crazy since then, built my home studio, which is where I'm sitting now. So yes. I do consider myself very much a songwriter. I make my living as a performer, but I, I love writing songs. I love that so much. I know that when you wrote this, you said that there may have been a, a lady friend involved in this hurricane uh, <laughs> terminology, as well as the actual mm. hurricanes coming through. So first of all, did you guys experience like the shack stayed up? Your sister's home was okay from the three oh. hurricanes? Oh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, there were, as all hurricanes, there are huge branches that come down, but none of them um, crashed into our shack or my sister's condo at the time. So there was no 
real physical damage, um, just being displaced for a while. Mm-hmm. You know, when these hurricanes come through in Florida, they're it's August, you know, ish and, or July, and once they move out, it's hot again. And if you don't have AC, it's just miserable. So, so we could not stay there for sure. Um, but luckily, we we avoided any real physical damage. Yeah, by August, I call that weather, or even late July, I call it um, step outside and sweat weather. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's, it it's summer, but the next season is step outside and sweat. Yeah, so I agree with you. Yeah, at some point, you need uh, AC. Well, let's talk about your song a little bit and why you chose the lyrics you chose. Um, do you want to take the lead on that? Is that okay? Sure. Um like I said, it's very much a, a metaphor for, um, for for what I was going through at the time. Um, so six o'clock on Sunday night, I'm, I'm wondering where they put the, the light away. That's actually when I went to check on the house. Six o'clock on Sunday night, and I'm wondering where they put the light away. Now I'm more a mystery and repeats itself in history this way. And so it was it was very much literal in the way that I went over there at six o'clock on Sunday night and my power was still out. However, it was still very much like a feeling of, you know, just the loss I was feeling at the time and how it kind of lived with me wherever I went, you know, and, and the lights. Because were... of the breakup? Yeah, um, definitely because of the breakup and um, wondering if it was for good because we had broken up times before and, um, and leading into this line and it's never more a mystery it repeats itself in history this way. It's just kind of that, you know, remembering that it's happened several times before and, and is this going to be it? So uh, after that line, it goes into, I'm going to close my eyes and hold my breath and hope that someone notices my pain. You know, I've never, I've always been kind of a shy, um, um, keep it to myself type guy. I never want to, you know, wear my, my emotions on my sleeve, especially if I'm hurting. You know, I, I don't know why that is. I think people are just like that or they're not. But that's how that, uh, that's what that line refers to. And uh, the, the last line of the, the first verse is, um, I'm on my last legs of resistance. God has granted me persistence on my way. I'm, I'm a preacher's son, grew up in the church, was very grounded in, in religion um, growing up, which I think is great for kids just to, to have that moral compass. I'm going to close my eyes and hold my breath and hope that someone notices my pain. My last legs on resistance God has granted me persistence on my way So yeah, that's the end of the first verse and then uh, the hurricane is going to take me by surprise Um, Maybe not so much with the relationship because it had happened before but definitely with those hurricanes that frequent that year Yeah. Um, And then then the hurricane is going to sleep with me tonight is just, you know Anybody who's gone through a breakup or loss, you know, you sometimes when you go you get in bed at night uh, and you kind of are alone with your thoughts, it's, it's the toughest time to uh, to deal with that kind of thing. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. I think that the um, I'm going to close my eyes and hold my breath and hope that someone notices my pain. I do wear my uh, emotions on my sleeve, but sometimes I don't want to go to someone. I want someone to reach out to me and say, hey. You okay? Is this is everything okay with you? Um, so I think that was a pretty vulnerable statement to write, and maybe even more so the fact that you don't wear your emotions on your sleeve, the fact that you wouldn't normally go to somebody, but you're clearly like in so much anguish or turmoil that you just kind of want someone to see. For you know, sure, is anybody going to notice this? My pain. Who's going to comfort me? Who's going to you know help take the sting out of this pain a little bit? Um, and then the hurricane's taking you by surprise. Um, definitely, they all, they take everybody by surprise because yeah. they're like, oh, it's going up the East Coast. And then the last minute, they're like, oh, 
Fort right. Myers is going to get it. <laughs> right. And, and uh, emotionally, you know, you can be blinded by a lot of things. Um, it wasn't quite the case in this, in this position. Um, you know, maybe it was a little bit of a surprise, but like I said, there was a history before. So, um, so yeah, you're definitely right about that. Well, I was thinking that too, that it was probably like, even though you guys had kind of done this on again, off again thing, it was probably still kind of caught you off guard. You know, if it wasn't your choice and clearly it wasn't because you were the one in pain, you know, so I would think that that was kind of, you know, a surprise that way. And then it's going to sleep with me tonight that like, you're just going to sit there and just be at war with yourself and your mind. Uh, isn't that the worst? Just that hurricane of that. thoughts and pain. Mm -hmm. And yeah, that doesn't sound like fun at all. I thought that this was so, so, so the, uh, the hurricane is going to sleep with me tonight. I felt that turmoil just in the music. Like I felt like these waters kind of not really rough, like white caps and stuff, but just these waters just mixing and swirling. And I kind of felt like I was like almost drowning or something. That's how the instrumental part of this song kind of made me feel just like this constant, unrest well thanks and that's where that that kind of finger picking um rolling kind of vibe um and even when i go to the e minor i, I my pinky goes from the g um and walks down throughout the verse and it just kind of does have this rolling wavy kind of um, background to it which i love yeah I love that. I love when the music of a song will mirror what the words are saying. You know, I, I think yeah. that was so creative. So well, thank you. Yeah. Yeah. I really did love that. But the hurricane is going to take me by surprise. But the hurricane is going to sleep with me. It's like some form of execution It's ratchet retribution on my name Okay, so like some form of execution This wretched retribution on my name This simple situation leaves a strange humiliation on my face Yeah, that was, um, again, uh, it's like some form of execution um, just so painful and i've always been a sensitive guy growing up in a house full of women um and i i don't i don't hate that you know i i there are good and bads that come through that i will cry watching a movie i like rom-coms but um <laughs> you know i just was really feeling it and it was it's such a simple situation when you think about it everybody goes through breakups every day you know but when it's you it's like, it's awful. It's the worst kind of heartache there is, you know, and, um, the simple situation leaves a strange humiliation. Um, you know, I just, just like I said, I'm being, you know, shy to, to show any kind of, you know, vulnerability because I don't want people to feel like they need to comfort me or, but like you said earlier, everybody needs that. And I definitely did. And that's why, you know, I chose the words that, I, you know, that I did in the song. Well, and it's never fun to be the one that got broken up with, you know, so right. I could see some, you know, especially as a man, some humiliation on the ego. Sure. You know, that's not, there's a, a saying that I like, your ego is not your amigo. And mm -hmm. so. And, and I had moved out to Berkeley, California, where she was at school at the time. And, um, <sighs> and we broke up not too long after I was there. So there I went out there and here I was returning back to Gainesville, mm -hmm. you know, kind of with my tail between my legs. So, um, so yeah, it, it was, it was tough, but, um, you know, that's life. Well, you saying, uh, it's like some form of execution. My son is 20 <clears throat> and he was dating this girl pretty seriously. And then he called me one day and my whole body went numb. And I was like, mm -hmm. Oh, the first breakup. I'm like, no, I don't want him to feel this pain. And that's what I always say about being married. Like, I am so happy that I'm happily married and I am not thinking about what it would have to be like to date and to break up. And it's just, oh, it's a pain I never want to go through again. But it yeah. was still kind of excruciating to watch my son go through it. So. I, I hear what you're saying because I, throughout my life, when I would have breakups and I would go to my mom, she would always say, I wish I could take this pain on for you, you know, kind of thing. And um, I mean, that's just the most loving thing someone could 
could say, wow, really meaning it. And I know she did. Mm -hmm. So I don't have children, but I could imagine that it's, it's probably more tough than, than actually going through it is seeing your child go through it and being helpless, you know? Um, yeah. And knowing that things will be okay, but you can't tell them that in the moment. Um, you know, no. you just kind of have to be there. And uh, so I'm sure you were with your son. <laughs> yes, I was. <laughs> it was not fun. But the funny thing was, is he kind of hid in his, he, I mean, he came back to the house and um, he kind of hid in his room. And I was like, you know, I thought we were going to like sit on the couch and you were going to cry about it. And we'd watch a couple of movies <laughs> together. And it was like, nah. <laughs> Yeah. So he doesn't deal with it the same thing that I, the same way I was going to deal with it. But you know, whatever, that's fine. Yeah, and that's the difference between guys right? and girls. You know? <laughs> Definitely. This simple situation leaves a strange humiliation on my face. I'm gonna bite my tongue and clench my teeth through all these fucking memories when they play. My last legs of resistance God has granted me persistence on my way The hurricane Is gonna take me by surprise Oh no The hurricane Is gonna sleep with me I'm going to bite my tongue, clench my teeth through all these fucking memories when they play. I'm on my last leg of resistance. God has granted me persistence on my way. I, I wanted to repeat that last line from the first verse just because it, I don't know, I felt like it, it was, um, it was a, a powerful line and I wanted it to get through. But my favorite line of the song is, I'm going to bite my tongue and clench my teeth through all these fucking memories that play. I, I don't, in my songs, I don't often curse, but if I feel like it's, it, it drives home a message or a point, I, I don't censor myself that way. Um, and I will change it live when I'm at a, you know, some place like PBO and their kids run around to um, all these lonely right. memories that play or something like that. But um it's just those it's it's almost like that line of of, of sleeping with it it's just they're, they're there in yes. your head and their memories and you might drive by a a place you you had dinner or you might you know there's so many things that will pop up and um and force those memories to come back into your head and i've never been good at like just ignoring that kind of stuff but that's also good in the way that i feel stuff hard you know um but yeah, that's probably my favorite line. Well, I think it just drives home the emotion. And if I'm somebody that just broke up, that's how I'm feeling. <laughs> <laughs> Through all these fucking memories, like you just want them to leave you alone. Right, I right? know. Like just the mental turmoil. Yeah, and they're, they're there and they play and they will come back and um, you just got to wait for them to fade. And some of them don't fade. You just learn to, to live with them. And yeah. uh, that's okay, you know? Yeah. And I also love that you did use that, that last line a second time because it just kind of drives home that point. Like, God is with me. I have the persistence to keep going on my way. It's, it, you know, I'm not having a good time right now, but I know that I'm going to get through this. So I thought it was good that you repeated it. And then comes that long chunk of music yeah. where that person is just thinking but man, it's so beautiful how you are picking the strings and and then it just, the string just lingers and then you, you pick it again, you know, but like, there's so much time in between on a, on some of them towards the end. I loved it. <laughs> well, thank you very much. And I actually wrote that outro a little later. Um, and, um, love it. I love, um, I sound horrible saying I wrote this oh. and I love it, uh, but, but, um, I, uh, I love the groove to it. I've always loved soloing over it because it's in a minor key and I'm, I'm a bluesy um, lead guitar player. And um, to this day, it's just one of my favorite progressions to solo over and really kind of let it be an emotional solo. Like every kid 
when they first start playing one are like shred they want to play so so fast you know and and there's some there's awesome stuff about playing fast but um like they've always said about jazz music the the, the crucial notes are the ones you leave out and um you know eric clapton was was nicknamed slow hand i mean he could shred but when he played his slow kind of just tasteful beautiful solos um you know they're just as good as, as layla or anything that he's jamming during and so um i, re I re-recorded this song last monday a week ago from today or when this is being recorded and uh was super happy with that solo at the end and actually i had mixed it down and went back and said you know i need to turn that solo up just a little more and uh, i was glad i did because that's the first thing you said after i sent it to you was that you love that part Jack, my ninth grade uh, co-songwriter, I, I um, sent it to him, and he mentioned the same thing as you did, right? You know, first comment, and so, uh, so yeah, thank you very much, and I'm I'm super happy with that too because it's it feels almost as as emotional as the portion of the song with lyrics that are you know telling you. I completely agree. I, I think that you bring up all this emotion and you talk about all this fighting with yourself mentally, and then you're just given a little bit of time to just kind of ruminate in those feelings. And then you bring in, you know, but the hurricane is gonna take me away by surprise. And you guys, when Robbie comes to the top of his bowels, man, I just love that little sweet spot of your voice. I don't know if it's really a crack or I don't know what how you would really describe it, but I just love when you come to the top of your vowels. Well, thank, thank you very much. I, I, I appreciate it, it. I just love it. I love it. Yeah, you're extremely talented. Well, and I can't believe that it's taken me this long, but can we talk about the talk box? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> well, hey, that, that's actually like a, I got it about six weeks ago. And um, so I'm just kind of learning my way around it, um, but I, I'm real comfortable with it now. Um, and uh, it, it's just been a fun kind of addition. I don't use it. I don't overuse it because no. I think you could do that. Yep. But I, over the course of a night, if it's solo, I might play it on five or six out of the 30 to 35 songs I play, but people really enjoy it. I love playing it. It's, it's, it's a unique effect. And I've always been aware of it from, you know, Living on a Prayer by Bon Jovi or Do You Feel Like I Feel by Frampton or there's a ton of songs it's used on but uh never never got one and, and finally i was like you know what i'm gonna get it see if i like it and i love it so well it was funny because when we went there i was talking to uh one of the guys that was with us and he actually is a huge music person period and so he was i was like you see that too <laughs> isn't that cool he he blows in it and he says like wah, wah, wah. <laughs> it sounds like music and he goes he really kind of gave you a compliment without knowing it and he said he doesn't look nearly as crazy as people normally look when they play that thing. Oh, He's really? actually doing a pretty good job. Yeah. And he said he personally has a talk box. And I was like, can I come play your talk box? And he's <laughs> like, yeah, but you're going to look a little crazy. <laughs> <laughs> well, it is. And I can hide because it feeds up my microphone stand and comes out by the microphone. Right. 
and I use a, um, a windscreen, you know, those ball type windscreens that uh, live mics will use. And um, so I can kind of hide behind that, but my, my mouth is definitely doing weird things. Oh. And I, I did have a female fan, um, my friend Lori say that uh, she found it sexy. So uh, I think so, it is kind of uh, sexy. I mean, I'm not, not trying to hit on you at all, yeah. but uh, it was kind of sexy. I'm like, that is a hot sound, man. So well, thanks. cool. It is very cool, and uh, and I'm super happy that I bought it, and uh, I'm getting comfortable with it. Uh, I know you have a YouTube channel that you put some music on. Can you tell us what that YouTube channel is? Well, since um, actually since quarantine started back in March of 2020, I've been doing live shows every Friday night um, at 8 Eastern time on my YouTube what? channel. And, uh yeah. So, and, and even though things have opened back up, I've had so many people watching from around the country that I work from home every Friday, which doing what I do for a living, I never thought I could work from home and shout out to my, my Friday night family of, of fans and friends that they're there every Friday. And there's a, there's a chat. They all know each other. Now it's almost like, <laughs> like, a, like a church type thing, you know, uh -huh. like where you come once a week and you see your, your, your friends and, um, so yeah, I've, I'm still doing that and doing super well with tips through that to where I don't need to book Friday gigs at wherever around wow. Jacksonville. And so yeah, those shows are on my YouTube channel as well as when I record a song in my studio and I post it to YouTube, those go up there. Then older videos like uh, when I met Felix and, and stuff back from the early 2010s. Um, so yeah, that's my YouTube channel. It's just Robbie Schenk, S-C-H-E-N-C-K. Now, where are you locally for my people in Ponte Vedra that are listening? Where do you uh, play? Um, I play, uh, my core nights are Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. And Thursdays, most Thursdays, I'm solo at Palm Valley Outdoors, which is where I saw you off Roscoe Boulevard underneath uh, or on the intercoastal yep. right near the Nocatee Bridge. And uh, so I'm there Thursday, most Thursdays solo, sometimes at Iggy's. I, I, I put our schedule out every Monday on our Instagram and Facebook, which is Robbie and Felix, Robbie with a Y. But uh, it's Friday nights from home still, which is amazing. Um, Saturday, Felix and myself at Palm Valley Outdoors. Uh, yeah. And then Sundays, I'm at a place called Harps over in the Avondale Riverside area of Jacksonville. I actually started playing there in 2007, and I've been there oh, wow. since. I've got reg the, my best regulars are all from there, and a lot of them are now friends. I'm having dinner with two of them tomorrow night. You know, oh, just, I mean, I've seen kids grow up. Um, it's just, that is one of my favorite um, gigs of all time. And so that's Sunday at, at, at six. But yeah, that those four days are my core days. and. Uh, business has never been better um which is awesome yeah well uh, again another quote from one of my other episodes was music is medicine for modern day living and i think that you know we all just went through something pretty traumatic and so you know music is helping everybody to kind of feel good again and a serious props to you that palm valley outdoor wants you every saturday and really honestly if they're going to take you thursdays too i know i know and i was worried about overexposure I, I i talked to the owner i was like are you sure you want me here every thursday solo because i'm here with felix every saturday and she was like the people want you here so we want you here kind of thing and uh i do play a lot of um different songs solo than i do with felix and i also get to um to play a lot more lead guitar and a lot more harmonica when i'm not with um him because he's such a virtu virtuoso and so amazing at what he does that when I'm with him, I let him, you know, I'll solo on a few songs out of the 35 we play in a night, but <laughs> I let him do his thing and people love it. And I love watching people see him for the first time, you know? Um, so yeah, it is a testament to, um, to Palm Valley Outdoors for having me so often. Um, and we, we love those guys there. They've, they've been nothing but great to us for the last three years that we've been playing there. And it's such a beautiful setting. I mean, the sunset, yes, it sunset is. behind us, um, it's just, it's awesome. And we love it there. Yeah. Yeah. Well, is there anything else you want to share as far as contact information with my audience? Um, no, I think just um, the YouTube channel, uh, Robbie Shank, and uh, the, the Facebook and Instagram, Robbie and Felix. And like I said, if, if you go onto YouTube and scroll down, you can see the full studio version recorded here last week of the hurricane, as well as um, a lot of my other stuff. So, um, so yeah, it's, um, thanks so much for having me. 
Yes, thank you so much for joining me. And everyone, with that, that's going to be the last note of this episode. Well, that was fun, wasn't it? You never know what rabbit holes we'll get to go down and explore. Were you reminded of anything or anyone? Share what it was with me in a review. Honestly, the reviews don't do me any favors other than knowing people like you are listening to this podcast. Insert cheesy wink. (laughs) However, the ratings do help. So leave me five stars. You know you wanna. This podcast was produced by Virtual You, supporting you in all things podcasting. To connect or check me out on social media, I mean, I know you're just going to stalk me. (laughs) But see the show notes, as always, for details. Can't wait to dive into my next guest's memories with a beat. Hit subscribe now. You don't want to miss the next episode.